Hello again. We are going to continue now. So after lunch I hope you have I hope you have enjoyed your lunch. Now we are going to continue uh, with the second part of our session today. So this morning or oh, the first part we have uh, seen we have seen a general view of the uh, NMP flight. Then uh, we have presented all the information that you can use to prepare your, your flight. Uh, then we have uh, been uh, using the NMP flight to manage your flight. And now we are going to, uh, to go into some detail uh, about what happens uh, when uh, the network is uh, dynamic. We have entered into this conversation already. Now uh, we are going to go into further detail. And Nevena from the Network Manager Operations Center is going to describe how we support and how we uh, provide our service to offer the, uh, the uh, stakeholders a reduce in, in, the, in the flight delay. So uh, she's going to describe the support we offer from the NMOC to reduce flight delay. So Nevena, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nevena Mujkovic and uh, I'm happy to be here today with you, participating in the Flight Dispatcher Days. I work at the Network Manager's Operations Center as Aircraft Operator Liaison Officer. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will be uh, talking about the NMOC organization, uh, also uh, the channels of communication the NMOC uses uh, with the aircraft operators, and finally, the support that the AOLO team offers their daily operations. And now just in a few minutes, I will be presenting you with some specific slides to support my expose. <laughs> okay. One second, no? Thank you, Andy. Okay. Now, uh, the, organ the NMOC uh, has three core units. The flight planning uh, unit, which manages the flight plans and the associated messages uh, for uh, all of the flights in and over Europe. Then we have the airspace uh, data unit, uh, which is responsible for building and maintaining uh, the Europe's airspace infrastructure uh, by collecting data uh, from the Aeron Aeronautical Information Publication, uh, AIP, the, A the AIP supplements, and the route availability document. Finally, we have the flow management uh, unit, which consists of two teams, the pre-tactical team, more about their work and the initial network uh, plan, the INP. You have uh, had the chance to previously uh, hear from my colleague Eileen in the previous session. And uh, the second team is the tactical team, which uh, works on balancing the traffic demand against the capacity available on the day of the operations. Now, to ensure the orderly flow of traffic within the network, um, sometimes the flow management positions need to act when in certain cases the traffic is forbidden, like incidents, closures, scenario applications, and when there are too many flights and the traffic needs to be spread over a period of time. To do this, uh, they need to uh, apply ATFM regulations. Now, when it comes to the, com uh, communicate, uh, the NMOC communication with the aircraft operators, uh, we request from the airlines to primarily use the e-help desk. The help desk phone line is reserved for those who do not have access uh, to the e-help desk. And in cer uh, some extraordinary uh, circumstances, uh, for instance, 
when you have massive delays on the flights that have been uh, previ that have previously diverted, or you have um, delays on the flights that are being uh, pushed into regulation due to an active MEL or CDL flight restriction. For instance, an MEL was raised previously before the flight uh, with a flight uh, restriction uh, level capping to a certain flight level, so you need to uh, fly into a certain sector that normally you didn't have to, and then you get regulated. Or you have massive delay on the flight uh, that is possibly threatening to result in a cancellation of the flight. Please call the AOLO hotline. No, no, phone, no emails, but just uh, the, the phone call. Now, uh, what we want uh, uh, for you to be advised is that uh, if you want your flight to be uh, considered, considered for an improvement, if regulated, um, you need to uh, your flight needs to be flagged in one of the following uh, statuses. The first one, request for direct improvement. All flights by default are, uh, have the RFI status unless the slot improvement proposal or SIP wanted message status has been declared. This means that uh, your flight will not be considered for improvement, and if there are better slots for your flight, you will receive a message with the proposed slot that you can either uh, accept or reject. Ready to depart, uh, we ask you that as soon as your flight is ready, uh, to, uh, uh, to make sure that your crew asks the tower to send a ready message. Uh, we want to underline the fact that only the tower uh, has the ability to send the ready message. Why is this important? Because each minute, and I literally mean each minute, our system checks the flight list, and all the flights that have REA status uh, have priority over the RFI flights and will get an improvement if there is one. And uh, finally, the critical flights. Uh, flights can be marked as critical through the e-help desk uh, service. And these, uh, the flights that are marked as critical are, um, have the highest priority and they get the best possible improvement straight away and if necessary, when necessary, they are coordinated with the FMPs. Now, when it comes to the way that we uh, at the NMOC and the EOLO team support your daily operations, as mentioned, we want you to know that all flights uh, caught in an ATF, ATFM scenario uh, or an ATFM regulation, including weather, uh, or a flight entering an overloaded ATC sector, or a flight that is uh, threatened to be cancelled due to an airport curfew. All of those flights are constantly monitored by the AOLO team. And we work on these flights. How? Uh, our initial action is always to try to reduce the delay of the flight. If decreasing a delay for, uh, if decreasing the delay of the flight is not possible for certain reason, then uh, reroute proposals may be sent to the airlines. There are different types of reroute proposals, and the reason that you will now we will later see during the demo uh, describes the purpose of the rerouting proposal. Now, this is a short uh, introductory part to the work that we do at the NMOC, and now I would like you. I would like to take you to the demonstration part. Uh, one second, so we can... Okay. Uh, where we will open the tool itself. Thank you. Okay. 
as you can see on your screens, uh, now here uh, I have, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is my user and for the purpose of this demo I have saved a flight list with a certain added uh, optional uh, columns. And also, as you can see here, we have a focus alerts uh, preset. When I say preset, is that I have uh, uh, that I have uh, put the red focus alert for rerouting. Change your, uh, change your, change your search to Swiss. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I will just. And just to have more options, I will add more flights. I'm sorry, one second. What I would like to speak now is that uh, when we talk about the reroute proposals within the NMP flight, here uh, you, we have two optional uh, columns, the rerouting column and the RRP respond by uh, column. The rerouting column uh, is, uh, displays the reroute uh, re proposal being sent and uh, the respond by time is the time uh, by which you need to respond uh, by sending a change message or uh, cancel and refile. It is uh, a period of 30 minutes from when the RRP is being sent. And I'm sorry. Can click on the call sign of one of them. Okay. On the call sign of the one of the ones that have been rerouted. One of the top two. Okay. I'm sorry, one second, just to find the read. It's no. You want to show you actually a uh, reroute with on the flight list, so that's why. <laughs> sorry for the delay. Okay, but until my colleagues manage to send a reroute proposal, I just want to speak a, uh, a little about the flight list. So here on the arrow, you can open the flight uh, management uh, window, but when you click on the call sign. Uh, full uh, flight management window will open with different options here. And when we have a reroute proposal, we, you can scroll down, sorry. With the rerouting proposal section. Okay. In the rerouting proposal section, you will have the original route that you can open by clicking on the uh, arrow. And here we will have the original route. The original route is the route that you have filed. Uh, the alternative routes, the reroute proposals, will be displayed uh, below. And the, uh, the alternative routes will be compared to the original route uh, by in terms of the ATFM delay then the flight time, the distance, route distance, fuel burned, and the uh, route charges. And if you like any of the alternative, uh, the reroute proposals that have been sent to you, I want you to, I want you to show that there are two, uh, two sets of action foreseen for the reroute proposal. The first one is the, sorry, I just want to, um, can be visible here. Sorry, one second. Okay. 
I'm sorry I'm looking at you, but just to show the, I want to show the sweater button. Oh, I have it now, the, I just want to go to the right here. Ah, sorry. Thank you. The two sets of action that we want you to do with the reroute proposal that you might have. The first one is called the RP actions here. In this uh, column, we will have an option to reject the reroute proposal if you choose not to take up on it. And on the far right, the root actions, you will have uh, three uh, options. The first one is copy the flight plan, which will take the route, the alternative route and paste it uh, up in the flight plan in the flight editor above. Okay, one second. So the route will be paste here. Then you have copy uh, 15 where you can copy the field 15 to the clipboard of your PC and also uh, the last option is validate. So if you click on the validate, you will be able to paste the route in the flight editor above and validate the route. Okay. By clicking, it will automatically perform the validation and here you will have uh, the result whether or not the route is valid. We always suggest strongly you, uh, for you to do this because uh, as you know in operations thing changes and it's always advisable for you to perform the validity of the route that you want to uh, file later. Okay and I'm sorry, maybe we will be able to perform, uh, to create one reroute proposal, but in the meantime, while my colleagues try to do that, do you have some questions for me? Okay, thank you very much, Navana. Um, so, okay, there are a couple of technical problems there. Hopefully we'll be able to resolve those and show you exactly what uh, uh, Navana is trying to show you. But uh, I think a quick summary. So Navana gave us an overview of the work that's done in the Network Operations Center. Um, looked at the communication methods that, uh, that we have, and there'll be a little bit more on the help desk in the next demonstration. The way we prioritize some flights and why we do that. Uh, and then uh, it's part of the support to aircraft operators, and uh, they tried to give us a demonstration on the RRP. I think it's important. You obviously can understand we're not working on a live system. We wouldn't ever demonstrate to you on a live system. So this is obviously a, a, a one of our um, uh, support systems, and sometimes for lots of different reasons it can be a little bit flaky, so we do apologize for that. Uh, in the meantime then, um, I'll uh, open the floor up to any questions. Uh, Nevena will do her best to answer, but we also have Slavis Dayanov, who's uh, one of our operations managers who's joined us. Uh, he has a wealth of experience in all matters flow, uh, so uh, if there are any questions then uh, between the two of them I'm sure they can answer. So the floor is open. Is there anything in the uh, in the QR? Okay, we have a question down here first. Uh, hello, I'm from Poland, from Jetstory. I have a question about priority status because I I believe it uh, used to be uh, five priorities per operator per calendar year. It is still five, or it is calculated a different way. Okay, you're asking us about the critical flights. So all, all the aircraft operators uh, have a limitation of either 20% uh, of their regulated flights on that day or five uh, number... 20% 5 of... 5%, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, the number hasn't been decreased. Five, uh, decre uh, increased. And so it's 5% of the regulated flights uh, on that day, uh, maximum 20 or uh, minimum of one flight. And uh, whether which one of those three uh, conditions is first uh, being met. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Navana. Uh, question over here from the gentleman at the front. Um, uh, a 
Ersin uh, from Sun Express Airlines, Turkey. Uh, my question is about uh, uh, critical flights. Uh, uh, you said to uh, every time for the crit especially for the critical uh, flights to call the Eola uh, Eola desk, but we received from our dispatcher colleagues that, uh, especially during this uh, summer season in peak season, uh, when they try to reach the Eola, they respond uh, as. Uh, Please send us a message instead of call. Up. So, how we can prevent, or what, uh, what's the best way to uh, manage the critical uh, flights in this uh, in this case? Okay, so uh, we want to tell you that uh, we all, as we've mentioned, we ask all the airlines to always focus on the e-help desk because. Uh, that is the best way that we can do most of the flights and uh, help a uh, greater number of the airlines. And when it comes to the EOLA hotline, it's not a replacement for the e-help desk. It's just rather than if you have situations that you cannot actually explain uh, via the e-help desk with the selection of the reasons that you already have there, uh, or as we mentioned, some extraordinary uh, circumstances like the MEL, MEL raised before flight and then you're forced to fly into a regulated sector even though previously you didn't have to. That is when we urge you to call us so we can coordinate uh, with our supervisors and then uh, with the FMPs to possibly exclude you from a regulation or improve you uh, to see if there is a course of action that can be acted upon, but it's not either or, the e-help desk or the AOLO hotline, if, if you understand, if I have answered your question correctly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry. Just, just to add to what Nevena said, it's absolutely correct, but sometimes you might have a question without having a slot. You see, so you might not have at all a delay, but you have another problem that you need to talk to us. Uh, for example, you have a root problem or, or there is uh, some event that we don't know, for example, and you actually are the source of information. You can tell us and then something is blocking you to operate from that airport or whatever. Then you are the one who will call because you cannot explain this on the PC. So you see, this is like both ways communication. Uh, I, uh, I got... Uh but uh, what, what about the cases uh, for the curfew issues or uh, any closures uh, for the destinations or uh, for the de uh, departure airports? For this kind of issues, uh, what's the best way to uh, contact uh, with the Eola? Those are explained. Those are available. Can you decrease it? Okay. Uh, those are explained. Uh, so those are available on the e-help desk and you can use them. So like a curfew or uh, a crew hours, those are available there that you request. Of course, if there is a, uh, let's say, a negative answer to, to you and then you still have something to explain, you might still call us. And then you say, okay, something that you cannot put on the, on the, on the PC. But uh, as Nirvana said, the, the, the curfew flights were already monitoring. That uh, you know, you operate into airport where you're going to close, like uh, if you go to Sebika Gyokche or something, that it's uh, having a, a work in progress during the night and you go into the closure time. And then we could then initiate uh, communication to the airports itself if they can ex uh, extend their working hours, or like it happened many times, that they modified the NOTAM on the last moment to allow flights to come back. So. Um, it's those uh, uh, critical flights that are mentioned in the help desk, they have the drop down menu. So you have all these possibilities like a curfew or, or crew hours. So if you have something that in addition you want to communicate, then you call the help desk. You know, that's, that's the principle that you want to follow. Thank you, Slavi. Yeah. Um, okay, our gentleman from uh, Turkey and then uh, I'll come back over. Can I just extend Arsene's question uh, for the, in terms of night curfew times? 
uh, how accurate information the your control or the operation desk has? Uh, are you coordinating with the airport or are you depending on the, the uh, operator's uh, statement? Yeah, thank you. We have, uh, since a few years, we try to establish the service which is called airport uh, position. And now these people, since last summer especially, are very active and they are monitoring constantly the flights that operate into the airport which they know that they have a night curfew. So, for example, German airports, they're very strict. Some French airports also very strict. But we monitor and we know the impact on you guys, on the airline, how much expensive it will be if you have to divert for this. And we try our best, especially if the flight is suffering from big delay from the network. If it's done because of your own operations, it's another story. But sometimes that you have a flight which is scheduled very close to the operating hours of the airport is very critical. If you depart from the airport which is closing down soon, and then the flight is suffering with the big delay due to the network issue, yes, we will try our best to take you out from there, but of course, sometimes we depend on the ATC. If ATC says no, it's no. But we have the data when we monitor. We have a crew which is constantly monitoring this. So even we try sometimes to call and say, can you extend the hours before even you are suffering? We see the numbers that are growing, that the flights will be actually not able to go there, and we try to extend the hours. But not always possible, of course. We are uh, asking the extension as an operator. We are asking the uh, uh, working hours extension from the airport. But when uh, we, we get, uh, most cases we are refused, but if we get the extensions, then does Eurocontrol know these extensions? Not always. You're right, this is a big problem. Because if it's communicated locally, in the local community, or directly to you as an airline, Many times it's not given to us, and this is exactly what happened to Sabiha Gyokche, where they had a closure due to work in progress, and they were opening and didn't tell us. And this is, of course, is an issue of the communication, and we address this in the post-op phase. We go back to the airport and we actually cover this. Okay, give us the notum before, not the verbal, the notum, and then we get it. So this is something that we work on. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Slavi. Um, okay. Um, are there any more questions in the room at the moment? Gentleman over there. Yeah, just a question. Could we have a copy of uh, the presentation? Because it was not in the documents that Natalie sent out. Boris? Yeah, we will collect all the presentations, also oh, those planned for anyway, tomorrow, okay. and share with, uh, with the participants. Thanks. This is the plan. Yeah, um, uh, are you from Air Arabia? I will go back again to uh, the e-health desk. Um, my question is, uh, when we send an e-health desk, how do you manage normally the messages? Is it managed by human or all of them? It's uh, by by machine. And also, uh, uh, sometimes it happens for us when we send an e-health desk as a critical one, uh, sometimes we get refused. If it's critical flight, how we can get refusal if it's about uh, FDP, flight duty period of the captain or the curfew or whatever. Um, can I just interrupt that? The next demonstration is about the e-help desk. So once we've, once we've done this Q&A, uh, Nicola is going to come up uh, with, uh, about the, uh, with some uh, information about the e-help desk. So, um, so we're going to go back to the demo now. Okay, thank you. So hopefully uh, we'll get that question answered for you in that session, there, uh, the next session, if that's okay with you. Uh, if it doesn't get addressed, then please ask it again and uh, I'll make sure that uh, you get the answer. So, Nivena, I believe you're ready to give the uh, end of the demonstration. Okay, thank you. Yes, so, yeah, as uh, mentioned, my colleague will explain how the pr uh, requests are being processed. Uh, but I just wanted to briefly return to the critical flights when we want you to be aware that... Uh, you cannot uh, preserve a certain number of flights as critical flights and then call the AOLO hotline and then add some critical flights to that number. So it is true that during the summer when you have called and said, okay, the, uh, this is our critical flight, is there something that can be done with a delay? We uh, definitely ask uh, you, uh, uh, while we work on the flight, please 
marked a, a flight as critical in the help desk, even though you have uh, called the EOLO hotline. So I just want that because when I say we work on the flights, then we check all the flight lists, try to decrease the delay. Uh, some supervisors are contacting the FMPs. And then also to address your part, uh, partly your last question, the, the, uh, the, we coordinate with the FMPs and if there is uh, a possibility, the delay will be decreased. In some cases, simply there uh, is no possibility. Like uh, the last uh, scenario was um, the strong wind at uh, Skip Hall Airport. The first call that we got was from the, Skip, uh, from the Amsterdam FMP saying no forcing flights into the regulation. Simply that is the situation. So that's why I uh, want you to know that flag, uh, marking a flight as critical is no guarantee that the flight will be exempted from a regulation or uh, with a decreased improved uh, of delay. Thanks, Novella. Before you finish your demonstration, there's a gentleman here who just wanted to ask a quick question because it's related to the previous one. Hi, this is Anurag from Air India. I just had a question uh, regarding the monitoring of no times and uh, monitoring of closures and night curfews. Do you do it for other international stations as well, like uh, certain of our flights to Bombay? They end up in that closure period because of CTOT delays. So is it being handled at your end or...? Uh... You, you, you mean the closure on the departure point? No, I have a flight from London to Bombay. Yeah. If I get a CTOT delay of maybe 40 minutes or 30 minutes, I end up uh, landing just around the uh, night curfew period. No, so we. In, in the Mumbai curfew in Mumbai. In Mumbai, yeah. So, uh, we don't, we, sorry, no, sorry. yeah, exactly. You know, we monitor only European uh, airports. Okay, so in that case, we'll have to go back to the help desk and raise a request about uh, informing you about this issue. Yeah, exactly. You could tell that you have a problem on your arrival. Okay. Doesn't matter, it's outside Europe. Okay. You can still say that you have a problem with your operating crews and, and diversion uh, risk. You can still ask. Yeah. Doesn't matter, that, but we're not monitor. We're not engaging with the, the world uh, operations. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for the question as well. Okay, Navena, if you'd like to finish up. Okay, now, uh, thanks to my colleagues here, now we can actually see uh, the process of the reroute proposals. Uh, please pay attention to the flight list here. We, as I mentioned before, we have the focus alerts for, set for the reroutings. And as you can see here in the column uh, RR, the rerouting, uh, we have uh, three flights with a uh, reroute proposal sent uh, active. When the reroute proposal is here, first, if you hover over with the mouse within the rerouting column, we, you have a tooltip. Uh, which contains the reason of the reroute proposal. We have mentioned that there are different reasons when we monitor the uh, traffic situation and send you a reroute. That is the NMOC routing. There are also flight efficiency reroutings, but please pay attention that the flight efficiency rerouting don't take into account the traffic, uh, general traffic situation. Uh, next, we have the state of the reroute proposal here it says produced and then also respond by which you can also see here in the respond by column if you have selected now when the reroute proposal is active you can simply click on the hyperlink uh, at the rerouting column and the flight management page will open with the original route the regulation that it has been caught in the flight plan and then also with the reroute proposals section already open. Here, as mentioned, you will see the original route, which you can expand to see in details. And below, all the uh, re, uh, alternative uh, routes sent. Here we have one reroute proposal. You can also click on the arrow to open the, and see the complete route. And here, uh, you ha we can see the comparisons being done uh, uh, with the original route. Uh, the coloring is uh, rather intuitive, so when we have a uh, cell colored in green, the delay of the uh, proposal will be less. Then we have the uh, flight time that has been increased, uh, the route length, the fuel burned, and the route charges.
Now we, as you remember, we have uh, two sets of action that we can do. Uh, the first one is if we choose to uh, if we choose to accept the reroute proposal, we need to act uh, upon it until uh, 1439 UTC. That means that a change uh, message or cancel and refile needs to be sent by this time. If we don't want to use the reroute proposal, then we need to click on the reject uh, RRP button. Why is this uh, important? And we ask you to uh, do this if you choose not to use the reroute proposal. Especially for, uh, this is important because at this very moment, while you have an RRP active, uh, please be aware that your flight is uh, having uh, two slots booked. The first one that your flight has, and the second one is the slot booked by this reroute proposal. <coughs> if you do not wish to use this reroute proposal, reject the RRP, and that uh, our, uh, slot booked for the RRP will be released. Releasing those slots may uh, result in other of your flights caught in the same regulation being offered by this uh, uh, CTOT. And that is why we ask you, the airlines, to uh, perform this uh, action if you uh, choose not to use the RRP. And again, the, reroute, the route actions that we have explained previously, I will just click here on the validate because uh, I want you to show what we have discussed. So uh, by clicking on the validate button, uh, it will copy the route in the flight plan in the, here in the editor above, and you will have the result uh, that the flight plan is uh, valid. It will also be displayed on the map. And that is from my side. Thank you very much, Navena. Um, we discussed beforehand um, what points Navena might want to emphasize. So I'm going to give you a chance again just to emphasize um, uh, any particular items in that demonstration. Well, again, uh, the prioritization of flights that, like we uh, already said, each minute our system checks all the flights in the flight list. If your flight uh, is ready, then please ask the tower to send a ready message. Only the tower can send a ready message. Simply by declaring that you are ready, we cannot see it in the system. So it is better that for you uh, to join this automatic process and if you're ready, ask the ready message. And the second would be, again, please don't hold two CTOTs if you don't have to because releasing the CTOT booked with a reroute proposal other flights can benefit. That's it. Thank you very much, Nevena. And of course, if you do have a ready message in the system, there is really no benefit in calling us to tell us that we have a ready, you have a ready message in the system because we know and we'll be working on it. Um, so, okay. Um, I know there's a couple of questions that have been put in uh, via the QR codes. Chris, uh, there was one in particular that you wanted to make sure about. Yeah, that. there's quite a lot of questions and we will be getting back to everyone at some point. Um, one that was quite in, in, um, really useful, I think it gives a, an idea of the work that goes on here in the summer, was to understand the volume of the operations, how many phone and qu queries NMOC receive, uh, NMOC receive every day regarding improvements. Slavi, is that something that you could give us a, a, an overview on? And then sort of the number of people that are working on these things? I, I will not recall the number of calls uh, now at the moment by heart. Um, but I can tell you that uh, before putting the e-help desk, we had more than 10 callers at the same time waiting in a busy day, which is really uh, slowing down our operations and, and the help to the airline. Uh, in now, at the moment in the ops room, we have one specific position for the help desk, which is manned by one or two people during the shift. But in the busy days, in the summer, we have additional position. So we have two help desks running. And a lot of other positions can open the help desk and help. So, but those are not their prime job. They will do this as a 
let's say, second job. They will do their prime job on monitoring the network, monitoring the traffic volumes and uh, uh, overloads, but uh, they will help the help desk, uh, the workload in the, uh, in the help desk. Uh, so we're saying sometimes you will have a delay in the answer. It's not that we're not doing anything. We're just busy with other phones and other people like you that are also calling us or um, uh, sending messages on the help desk. And I will here again ask you, uh, all of you, not to try to call the phone, to call to uh, put a request for the same call sign on the help desk, and at the same time to call the ATC for help. Because in the end of the day, you create workload for us, and then it's actually counterproductive. So if you have an answer for no, okay, you can explain if your flight is really critical and then you have a big trouble to call the airline uh, yeah, representative or help desk uh, hotline, uh, I would say. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, I know that you're under pressure during the tactical day and we are also in the summer busy day. We are saying that we will try our best and you have to trust us that we'll try our best because if the network is limited, it's limited. If somewhere we have a capacity issue, we can tell you reroute and we can give you a reroute proposal. But it's, it's useless to call 10 people and have the same answer in the end, because in the end you get a really engaging with too many people and then have no, no improvement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Slavi. Um, so I think uh, we've talked about the e-help desk and what that can offer us. So I think it's probably a good opportunity now to close this particular session and move on to the next one, which addresses that. Um, as I've said before, and I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face, if you do have a question and you, and you write it down via the QR, please try and identify yourself because we do want to get, uh, get back to everybody either tomorrow, later today, tomorrow, or even after the event. So uh, none of your questions are wasted, but we do need to know who asked them. Um, so I I apologize if you had a burning question at the moment, but I think hopefully the e-help desk in the next couple of demonstrations uh, will uh, will answer those. Uh, back to you, Leah. Yes. Uh,